Welcome to the Disruptors Podcast Network. Today on our show, we're going to be talking to Samuel White, a very interesting artist from Spokane, Washington. He's going to be talking to us by phone interview of how he got started and how his interests have really grown in producing some beautiful paintings. So now, here's our interview with Sam. Well, when did you get started in painting? When did this all start? I started drawing when I was yeah, in high school, around 1974. And then uh, I was pretty... Uh, Pretty, you know, I partied more than anything, and and so my grades were pretty bad. But the art kept me, uh, kept me in there. Matter of fact, helped me graduate because I had like three, four art classes. And uh, the teacher was Al Kohler, and he was an artist himself. And he was just really helpful because they'd be giving a class assignment. Say they'd say, do a watercolor of this, and he'd have a week to turn it in, and I'd turn in. Several. Several. <laughs> yeah. And then we'd have printmaking, and somebody would do uh, one print, and I'd do three, three different kinds. So I've always been just doing more and more and more. And he eventually told me that that he's not going to grade me by the day. He's going to grade me by the week. <laughs> and so uh, that's how I graduated from high school. When I got out of high school, I started doing, uh, trying to start a landscaping business, and I got that going, and then uh, I got bored with that and decided to join the military. So my time was just busy, 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 and I had no time to paint or draw or anything, really, until about 1999, I got back into it. I think I did see a painting I did in 1979, but then 20 years later, I started doing it again, and... uh, I went to a garage sale and got a bunch of pastels they had. It's like somebody had a craft store that closed up. So I bought, they had, there was a case of them. I bought the whole case. And then I went to uh, buy some some tablets that can handle pastels. And I started doing my drawings like I did in high school. And then uh, it just, uh, I got a person that said they, Hey, could you frame these? I'll put them in a gallery. And I thought, never thought about a gallery. So Cat's Eye Gallery let me put some, some drawings in there once I framed them. And then uh, then I went to another place and another place. And pretty soon I had so much going on, I, I rented a studio from um, the same place that this Cat's Eye Gallery is doing it. And uh, I had a place to at least paint. And then I just went crazy. And then somebody showed me how to do uh, stretch my own canvases. Oh. So I to do bigger stuff, I just built frames and started stretching my own canvas. And uh, somebody showed me how to do uh, use leather tools. So then I did a bunch of leather portraits and stuff, trying different things. I think I probably did 100 of them or maybe 300. I don't know. I did a lot of them. I was doing one and two a day. And then uh, I, I really like doing the painting, so I, I stopped buying it by the quarts. I started buying paint by the half gallons. And then I only buy primary colors and then black and white. And then I just mix my own colors. So every color you see is uh, something I made up. I like painting like that. And when I get into canvases, I take a black marker. And I don't know where it comes from. I just start drawing. And then once I draw it, I think about it. And I like doing more than one because I, when I mix up my paint, I don't like wasting paint. So I've been known to do 20 at a time. I have I had homemade built um, canvas, I mean, uh, easels that'll hold 20 canvases. So I got, two, actually I got two of them. Now I have four. And, and I mean, it just keeps on going and going and going. So at any rate, once I learned how to do the stretching and stuff like that, I, I wound up the cat's eye down because they sold the building. So then I moved into another place, was bigger. So that means I could do bigger paintings. So I wound up doing, I think the biggest one I've done was like six and a half, seven feet by 10 feet. And I had to use a um, painter's tarp to do it. I didn't know you could buy a canvas that big. So I used the painter's tarp and stretched my own. 
get the ceiling when you're trying to staple it. And I had to use ladders and stuff. So at any rate, I only had one or two, no, two shows I could put that in. So now it's hanging in my garage because it's so big and it's hard to even move around. And now that this, uh, I've been staying with the art and, uh, I hooked up with a guy in at the, uh, Marmot Art Gallery. And when I was doing a show on, we did an art on the Av show every year and he saw all my big stuff and introduce himself so i went and did that and uh i did a lot of paintings for him spokane they have this place called uh kendall yards and they had a bunch of places that were going to be leased and they're still working on them so i put my paintings in the window so i cut some boards to fit the windows and and i probably did 20 paintings and they're they're all like six seven feet and by three feet wide or something like that so at any rate, I've done a lot of art shows now in Spokane. I've got enough. I do so much that I've got three or four art shows going on right now. And I still have, I think I've done like almost 500 paintings this year so far. This TV show called Northwest Profiles got a hold of me. And they did a little little deal on Northwest Profiles. So I go and see Northwest Profiles slash Sam White. And I got my six minutes of fame on TV. Then a radio broadcast did a thing with me. And then I've had a few articles in, t in the paper and different things. Um, but I just have fun doing it. And now that I'm retired, I get to focus all my time on art. And I think I've gone nonstop since we've been on this uh, um, stay at home pandemic thing that I've. I don't know, average four paintings a day, sometimes 10, depends on how I feel. But at least I do one a day for sure, but I know it's more than that, usually four. I did four last night. And uh, I just enjoy doing it. It keeps me centered. I think if I didn't have this art during this pandemic, I'd be a, a nutcase probably. Uh, yeah, so, I can agree with you there. Yeah, we wound up doing a couple shows, a bunch of artists in town. There's like 70 artists that got involved, and we put our art up in the, the yard on easels and stuff and put out the addresses, and it's called Art on the Go. So we did it, I think, in May, and it turned out really good. So they did another show in June, and it even was better yet. And uh, it's kind of nice to sell your art still, but doing it in your own yard. So we're keeping our distances, doing what we're supposed to do. Because you know, I want to get, I don't want to get this flu. I don't like getting sick. So I just focus on painting and painting and painting. Now I've got, I built some shelves and I got some plastic and I've been putting all my stuff in plastic. I think right now I have ten or twelve boxes full of paintings, different sizes, maybe twenty. Yeah, I donate a bunch of paintings too. And uh, for fundraisers, I like doing it for fundraisers. Plus, I don't, you know, I give paintings to people that are uh, a friend of mine's hus husband passed away. So I, I made a painting for her. Somebody else's dog passed away. So I made a painting for her. Um, I also, this lady's dad, um, this my actually, this my doctor's um, father passed away. And so he really loved her dog or, or this dog. So I, she gave me a picture of the dog and she gave me a picture of him, separate pictures. So I put them together and made one, gave her that as a gift. I like doing that kind of stuff because it makes me feel good. Well, that's the reason I do art. It makes me feel good. I'm not out to, I, I survived with my, what I've got coming in every, every month to where I'm, I'm not hurting for, for money. So it's not like I'm a starving artist. As, as, and if you look at me, you know that I'm not starving. <laughs> We've seen several <laughs> pictures, so yes, I'll verify that, yes. Yeah, 300 pounds of artist right here. <laughs> yes, there's nothing wrong with that, sir. Nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. My wife, my wife was missing me out in the garage, so she wanted me to paint inside the house. So I'm making my, I think the biggest thing I've done in here is like two feet by four feet. Holy when I put God. this cardboard on my one of my coffee tables, and... Uh, Man, I tell you, it looks like a piece of artwork. 
It, it's ready for things. framing, yes. <laughs> I tell you, it's crazy. So I'm, I'm just having fun with it. Art's a good escape. It's a good outlet. And I don't drink and I don't do drugs. And, um, I, I drink coffee. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't use any tobacco products. So I'm kind of a boring person other than I like my art. Well, it's uh, <laughs> I, I don't see anything boring about that at all, Sam. Not and my at wife all. says, no, I'm not. And I also built, when we moved into this house three years ago, I put a park in because we have a double lot. So I have my own park. And so uh, I sometimes go out in the park and play some music and paint. Now, you and play you know, guitar, like, do you? No. No, I, that, was, that was fake. I just like jamming with music. Oh, I like I see. guitars. I see. I've got, a whole, I've got like 17 guitars signed by different bands. And some of them are multiple bands. And I bought them online from people that had uh, fundraisers with guitars. Oh, oh. Well, I saw them in I saw them in your living room, and I thought, well, Sam's a musician on top of everything else. You know, I can't play a lick. But if I crank my music loud enough, you can't tell that I can't play. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, I had my music outside, and I had this blue guitar. Then you have an amp or nothing. It's an electric guitar. And I've got my music jamming, and people are going, man, he sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> got him, co- got him convinced. <laughs> the air guitar, but it was a real guitar. <laughs> <laughs> got him convinced. Well, let me ask you a couple of questions here. What what stimulates you to come up with the colors in the message or the the actual content of the picture itself? I know I really like the one you sent me, which is the beards. And uh, what what gets you stimulated into figuring out what colors and what, I guess, content that the picture is actually going to come out with? Well, I really don't even know how to answer that. I just, I just uh, sometimes I'll think of, oh, yeah, couples. That'd be fun. Let's do some couples. So I'd look on the Internet and see couples kissing, and then I'd draw them in my style. Um, and I'd do, of course, I'd have to find six or seven couples and so I like their positioning and stuff and then I just draw them in my style and then I start painting and I think well they're sitting on the ground so I'll paint grass or or have yellow <clears throat> just different things like that and then I I do a series of dancers like oh dancers would be fun so then I do a bunch of different kinds of dancers and uh, dancing parties and stuff and then uh, I do uh, oh I think I'll do some animals so then I do some realistic animals to break up the other stuff. And then I did a series of Africans, um, people that are living out in the jungle and how they live. So I did a series of them. And Native Americans, I, I like their powwow stuff. So I do some dancers and some some natives dressed up in their, their, their native dress. And then uh, I do portraits of... Like I'm doing right now, uh, Matisse and Van Gogh, I already finished. Uh, no, I finished Van Gogh. I got Matisse and Picasso still. But I'm doing those in black and white because it's kind of fun. And they're bigger. And then uh, <clears throat> my granddaughter, I, I did a portrait of her because when she was little, she was holding a bottle with her feet and her hands. And it's just cute as hell. I'll be so I said, I got to paint that. So I painted it for my daughter for her birthday. Yeah, that's that's a lot of fun. Yeah, and then uh, I guess like uh, I like like uh, I saw somewhere I saw was on Facebook or something where they did that stained glass looking kind of art. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, that'd be kind of fun to do. And then I thought, oh, it'd be even fun to do if I drew a face or a couple faces or whatever, and then did it over the top of that, so you could see. That there's a face there, but you have to really look, unless you know obvious eyes and stuff. So I thought that would be fun, but then I th- thought colors. What colors would I use? And then I s- said, oh, I'll just use multiple colors. And then I thought, what about taking a blue and just using all the blues you can make up with white and black and stuff? And what about greens, and reds? Right. And that's how I did. It. I, there's a lot of colors, so I've done, I think, seventeen or eighteen of them now. I think I want to do. I'm thinking about doing one more in pink, so the dip from hot pink down to really light pink. Really light. 